Hi, and welcome back to the Rage Fitness Wellbeing Podcast. So our next guest is a um, very inspirational young man, and I'm extremely proud and excited to have him as a guest today. And it's Sizzo, the professional boxer. So we've been doing these podcasts for, I don't know now, six to 12 months. And we've always tried to keep um, our guests core to rage fitness as in people who have gone through one of our programs and gone through one of our health and well-being sessions or something like that so having an, someone outside of that for me is quite special yeah <laughs> um so for people who don't know you and have never seen you before who are you where'd you come from obviously i've said you're a professional boxer but elaborate a little bit more about you uh, well, I'm Zizo. Like you said, uh, I am a professional boxer, but I'm from a side of the world where there aren't really many international professional boxers, if any. Mm. So I am uh, the first to do it the way I'm doing it from Saudi Arabia. I'm a professional boxer from Saudi Arabia. The first ever professional boxer from Saudi Arabia to turn professional internationally, do it internationally, live abroad, train abroad, after having been built up in the uh, Arab local system. So to do that, it's, uh, it's just a whole other uh, side of struggles and conflicts and, you know, climbing mm. that ladder. But yeah, um, I was raised between uh, Saudi Arabia and Egypt as a kid. I trained between both. My mother is Egyptian, my father is Saudi Arabian and... Uh, that's just that's pretty much it. Every other thing to me is still being written, and I'm going with it. I like that, and I think being the first ever of anything, there's there's lots of questions around that. Should they be there? Are they capable? Have they got the skill set? Have they got the mindset? Who are they? There's always those questions or anomalies that come up, and. I've watched your podcast and I've watched shows that you've been on and you can see how you conduct yourself. It doesn't matter about the exterior to a degree. Yeah. Because I'm an advocate for extreme strong mental health and extreme resilience around adversity. And I was saying to Charlotte earlier on today and I said to Charlotte maybe last week, you need to watch his, the podcast that he's been on because how he speaks elevate you and not many people can elevate me yeah. <laughs> people will tell you that because i think i'm a know-it-all i think i'm i'm the best at what i do i know where i'm going with this organization how many people are going to help um so from my perspective where did that formulate where did that confidence and potentially resilience formulate from where did it come from for you it's just knowing that you will always feel some way you know, you are going to feel uh, the emotions when they come and whenever they come. So learning to accept emotions when they come at the right time or at the, in the right place, you learn to accept them. And when you learn to accept emotions coming, you know how to deal with them better. And part of dealing with them better is knowing how to express them. So the way I think about it is I just express every emotion I'm going through with confidence. Mm -hmm. And then confidence is knowing that you can't let the external mess with your internal. And when I say that, I don't only mean mindset and emotions and personally. I mean external goals and life and social life with your internal goals and emotions and social life where this is your business this is these are your goals and then external is this is your family this is your comfort mm -hmm. so anything internal is uncomfortable mm -hmm. anything external is comfortable and you can't let the external mess with the internal that's what i mean but knowing to expect specific emotions at specific times will help me deal with them when they come. And I choose to deal with them with confidence because, you, as I said, you're going to feel some way at the end of the day. So just 
choose the confidence and mm -hmm. that's the only thing people are going to know about you. They're only going to know as much as you show them. So show them the confidence and from inside you could show yourself whatever you want to show yourself but only you will know about it. You just said a word then, choose or choose or chose. And when you said that I got a goosebump and it doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't happen to me very often because I think a severe mental illness with a diagnosis you can't choose to stay away from that. But how you choose every day when you get up or you plan X, Y, and Z or you have an expectation of X, Y, and Z, not many people choose to be inspiring. Not many people choose to see the glass half full. Not many people choose to live a life that they want rather than that they, they, they have to have. And I think what we do is that we identify people's choices for them and help them get to them quicker um and i think when you talk about emotions mental health in general either that be a, a single mum with two kids or a boxer going through camp there's so many different emotions to choose from and it's how you get from being low to being high mm -hmm. or from being a quitter to stay in disciplined and that's something that I'd say 99% of the world's population struggle is that you do have a choice at the end of the day yeah and it's down to you how you choose or what you decide to do when shit hits the fan basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, as I mentioned I've listened to some of the podcasts and th people have asked you this question but you haven't actually answered it in my opinion, is that you, you're a boxer and I've watched I watched your last fight. Congratulations, by the way. Um, you. he come out at you like a rocket, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> he yeah, was, he yeah. was crazy, yeah. yeah he was. I was sitting there going, Wow. Yeah. Um why did you be want to, why did you want to become a boxer? It was just because of the amount of history that's yet to be written in it. That so you no saw the opportunity? Had. Yeah. The amount of history that is yet to be written in boxing for the Arab world and that no one has really done yet, that's what made me choose boxing. That's what made me... I wouldn't want to say that's what made me choose boxing. That's what made me still stick to boxing until mm -hmm. today. Because to choose one thing is one thing and to stick to it is another. <laughs> You need, yeah, you need many other reasons to stick to something once you've chosen that and only one reason, one reason to choose something and to just mm -hmm. go towards it. So it's the amount of history to be written in the sport. And then I've always seen myself as someone who wants to deliver a message to, to the world and especially my side of the world, a message of unity, a message of peace, peace a message of enthusiasm and personality and all that and the only way to do that is to get to a stage in my life where people are going to listen to me <laughs> and uh, I I saw that the way to do that for me was through boxing it was something I'm good at and I was successful at early in on my career and when I say successful at I don't mean the fighting and the matches I mean mentally. Hmm. Mentally, I wasn't defeated. Even if I was defeated by the external factors in which how a fight will go, I won or lost, mentally I was never defeated in terms of am I going to still keep going? Am I going to still advocate and say my side of the story and send my messages, all that, you know, so. And I, th I think you said the word unity. And not many people say that word often enough, I don't think. We talk about conflict within the world, either that be wars or territory or neighborhoods for whatever reason. Um, there's not, an, I believe, there's not enough love which equals there's not enough connection. So your home is miles away from where you are currently and I've got the privilege to speak to you <laughs> it's through, my privilege, really. We've got the privilege to speak about stuff that we're both passionate about. Yeah. 
to me, that's remarkable that we can do that from where I've come from, live a bit, living in Liverpool, in Anfield, having lots of negatives from my upbringing to then build a space that people feel safe enough and an organisation that can, that's helped hundreds of thousands of people to then sit across from yourself. That in itself was already unified so many different cultures yeah. and different nationalities with one purpose around improving overall well-being, mm -hmm. bringing people together to, as I always say, improve lives and make a difference. Even yeah. if this helps one individual speaking about you or us, then so be it. And I think that's quite a special thing, even when you're in camp, to come and take your time and, and do this when you want to maybe just chill out yeah. and just be in your own box for yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that, I think that's already is, is, a, is a big thing that we're doing. Yeah, but um, like I said, you know, podcasts are, for mm. me, therapy sessions. And Definitely. whenever I feel like I need a therapy session <laughs> and I have an opportunity to do a podcast, it's to share my therapy session mm. with whoever is going to tune in and listen and hopefully the largest amount of people I can. So when one goes through something they know that someone else they mm -hmm. watch every day or they look up to or there's doing something that is different. They're going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said earlier that people are going to sometimes need to understand that they have a choice and they can choose to look at the cup half full or they can choose to feel one way or another. But what is even more important is knowing and accepting that it is okay to feel both perspectives mm. of the emotions that you are going to go through at a specific time. When you are going through a stressful time, you need to stop trying to push away the stressful emotions once they hit and only start leaning towards and accepting the good emotions and the comfortable emotions, as they say, because then where's the growth? Mm -hmm. And then once you choose to accept and understand that because I'm going through a stressful period of time, it is okay to feel stressful. You will know how to deal with it better because you've accepted it, you've welcomed it, and now you're just rolling with the emotions. But patience, you know, just with patience, you learn to know that one day, not even one day, one hour you're going to feel good, mm. one hour you're going to feel bad, and it's not going to work if you're only going to accept one emotion over the other. You have to accept both so you know how to deal with both emotions. Know how to deal with yourself and understand yourself when you're feeling bad, when you're feeling sad, when you're feeling low, and learn how to accept and deal with yourself when you're feeling good, you're feeling happy, and you're feeling stress-free. But both of them, you're going to have to know more about yourself. And to know more about yourself, you have to grow mentally. And to grow mentally, you have to be put in uncomfortable situations. And to be put in uncomfortable mm -hmm. situations, you have to accept being put in them. And that's the most important thing. It's to not choose one way to feel over the other. It's to, learn, it's to choose to accept to feel both perspectives and all emotions that are going to come through the time period you are in now because at the end of the day that is all we own the time you are in now mm. you don't own tomorrow because it's not promised and you don't own yesterday because it's gone mm -hmm. so the only thing you own is now and being able to accept the emotions all of them that you are going to go through now I completely agree with everything that you just said, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think something that when you were speaking, every time you mentioned something, I was thinking about this, is that I believe a lot around energy, either that be positive or negative. And it's up to the individual to choose whatever that means for them. Yeah. I don't try and put my beliefs onto you exactly. or to the audience or to our members. It's about you know when you're feeling positive and you know when you're feeling negative mm -hmm. and how that energy comes out of you. For example, if I'm driving and I cut in front of somebody and they're effing and jeffing because I put them at risk or they might have a kid in the car or whatever, they, that energy that they feel, anger, frustration, how dare they, 
that is going with them to the journey. Mm-hmm. Either that be to work, drop the kid off, whatever. Mm-hmm. If you allow your mind to focus on that energy for a certain time period, an hour, two hours, whatever, you've got the capacity to reflect and control and choose to remove that negative energy out. Um, and I think it's massively important to identify that because how many people, I use this word quite quite on purpose, how many people can you infect with that negative energy? And if you're feeling, um, as I said before, on a one to 10 scale, if you go into work and you're a one out of 10, frustrated, angry, you're gonna affect your colleagues. Yeah. Oh, well, Craig's a bit off today. Mm-hmm. What's the matter with him? Mm-hmm. Looks a bit angry. And then they're becoming a little bit nervous, they become anxious, whatever. Um, and I think it's so easy to walk around choosing to be angry, to choose to be frustrated. Um, so then, as you mentioned, a podcast can be therapeutic and it can be therapeutic for the listener, but then also the person who's actually speaking on it also. Um, and I think overall, there's more positive in the world than it is negative. But just going back to s- trying to raise the profile of unity and connection and, and, and happiness and all the rest of it, there's no bigger stage than where you're going to be at yeah. when you're going to be a champ. Yeah. And I say if, because I believe in putting it out there and it'll yeah, attract. Yeah, <laughs> me too. So when you're a champ, not people aren't listening to you now, but you'll have the ears a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, what other objectives have you got? What are the goals, ambitions, desires, apart from obviously becoming a champ, uh, raising the profile of your country, friends, family, loved ones, brothers, sisters? What else? It's just, for me, um, my biggest objective would be to always have something that no one can ever take away from me. Mm. So I go through a lot of a lot of stuff in the sport mentally more than I do physically. And then some days physically more than I do mentally. But overall the ride is very mental and I go through a lot. And I've went through a lot coming where I've come from and what boxing system I've come up in to catch up and try to adapt to the boxing system I'm in now. So sometimes I can't help but feel that maybe when I'm set enough, when I'm a built enough figure, Mm. not necessarily a champ, but when I'm a built enough figure, maybe I want to step out of the sport. That's that's how I sometimes feel because Mm. of the struggles I go through in camp and preparing for fights and the pressure I'm under going into a fight. But then this is one side and then the other side of me comes out and says, but I'm put on a road right now Mm -hmm. where I could be the first world champion for Saudi Arabia and the Arab world. I could be the first undisputed world champion for Saudi Arabia and the Arab world. I could be the first ever. And when I say first, I mean the first ever. I could be the first multi-weight world champion I could be the first undisputed and multi-weight world champ. So when I'm the first ever to do something, I can't help but think, if I one day step away from the sport before I have accomplished all of that, mm-hmm. how am I going to accept that there might be someone else that is going to come after me and accomplish all that I could have accomplished but chose to walk away mm. just because... I thought that, you know what, this is a, a tough sport and I go through too much to accomplish it. But I'm on a tough day today, yeah. Craig. I'm going to give it in. Exactly. So I can't, I can't do that. How many years has the world existed? Mm. How many years has boxing existed? And so why has no Arab accomplished what I want to accomplish? And why has no Arab be put in the road, on the road in boxing to accomplish what I'm about to accomplish, God willing? So... I can't step away from the sport before I accomplish all this. Or like you said, I won't step away from the sport before I accomplish all that because this is something no one can ever take away from you. 
and it's it's going to require a lot and i'm going to go through a lot and i'm going to lose a lot and sacrifice <laughs> a lot but i'm willing to go through all of that so when your name is said long after you're gone this is something nothing can buy and this is something nothing is not worth losing for and i think as i mentioned before energy yeah definitely all that is extremely fucking positive energy yeah how many yeah. children will you inspire yeah exactly just talk about children for a minute yeah that's children yeah and you yeah. can hear them shouting yeah. in the playground <laughs> next door so we apologize for that there's a, there's a playground next door and they're going crazy so just talk about your uh, i'm going to re refrain if we're talking about legacy and how many children will see what you've done and go if he can do it i can do it mm -hmm. and that's the philosophy that i do so yeah uh, my a very quick background as me is that i was suicidal i was a drug addict i was an alcoholic i was homeless and i come from a very deprived background mm -hmm. so then now i'm in a position where we've got loads of different pieces of equipment and we've got a, a facility like this and we have members and we've got people around the world following our programs it's because I share my story from time to time about how far I've come physically and more importantly, mentally. Because in the sp space that I was, I wasn't a two out of 10. I was a fucking zero out of 10. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to get anybody beyond the five in that yeah. area. So then you've got the capability physically and mentally to do what you, all what you've just mentioned. Yeah, we have tough days and that's playing it down mm -hmm. let's say but then i think what you need to remember just in general is that the positive outweighs the negative yes you sacrifice you overall but then the legacy that comes for your country nationality religion will outweigh everything in that yeah. in that sense plus as 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 i say in general you're creating a blueprint yeah and when That's you're saying bit. that, yeah, when you're saying that, when you're, I had to learn to accept on this journey that because I'm the first to do what I'm doing, I'm going to be the first to make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have to be okay with that because. Are you okay with that? I am okay with that. Mm. At the moment, am I okay with that? No. But after the moment is gone, which again is all we own at that time then I'm okay with it because uncomfortable situations is where the growth comes. And there are two things right now that are very important that I want to say. It's the first one is when in the heat of the moment, when in the heat of anger, when in the heat of sadness, when in the heat of depression, or when in the heat of a shocking moment, when it first comes, the first reaction has to be silence. And the second reaction has to be reflection. Mm. And then comes the third reaction of expression. So the first one has to be silence because whatever you are going to say in the heat of the moment is never what you want to say and it's never what you should say. And the second should be reflection is because the third one is going to be expression. Mm. So when you stay silent, and you reflect in silence, when you reflect in isolation, even if it's, I'm talking even if it's seconds, mm. if you just stay silent for seconds and you reflect of the emotions you are going through right now and what you feel like you want to say, but should you say it, this is the reflection. Then comes the expression. The expression is, I know what I feel like I want to say, but I know what I should be saying. And sometimes the best thing to say is nothing. Do you, talking about you, do you do that internally about yourself? So let's say, for example, you're in camp and you're struggling. Do you become in the present moment to identify what's going on in your mind, to then reflect and then act? ultimately that's exactly what i always do. do you do that all the time i always do and then whenever i feel like my mind is going to the future mm. 
and which it does yeah and oh. it, which is the, which it it will go there either you like it or not <laughs> either and the more you push it away the more it will keep going there it's like higher yeah but when you reflect and you know it's going there because you are about to approach a very important outcome or period or meeting then it's okay that your mind is going to go to the future mm -hmm. but all you can do is limit the time it goes into the future but you can't limit it from going to the future at all and then another thing i want to speak about and you were just talking about that relating to what you were talking about in speaking about what you go through and inspiring others it's that we are given two choices that we really know nothing about and not many people know anything about these two choices they only think there's one choice mm. what if just think about it what if you change your mindset from going that you are the one to be rescued mm. to going that you are the rescuer so after you go through something if you change your mentality from i need to be rescued to i need to start rescuing because of what you have just went through. So if you went through a tough period in your time, in your, in your life, now you are given two roads to walk. Either wait for someone to rescue you or wait for something to rescue you or use what you have went through to rescue someone else and that will rescue you. And I think that's what, I, again, I've, I've agreed with Evan so far. Yeah. Um, and I do like challenging people, so it might be something in a minute. <laughs> but from my perspective is that my whole outfit of everything that I do, and I've never heard it in that, in, that, in that analogy, is that I rescued myself. I didn't go to a health professional. Yeah. I didn't go to any um, drug addiction counseling, rehab. I didn't go to any mental health professional. I got myself to this position by helping myself mm -hmm. ultimately mm -hmm. and then how we came about the entire company is that because i knew how low i was i thought if i can help myself i might be able to help somebody else and that's it and that's been happening ever since 2018 and then hence why we can be in this position having a chat and reflecting on what you're just saying is that that's exactly why I live and breathe, as I've just never said it in that way. So I appreciate that sentence. And I'm going to try and rob that and put it on my Instagram <laughs> handle if you like, care to see me. Yeah, no, but <laughs> that that's, again, thats it's one thing to choose to get up from what you've gotten up from. And it's another thing to choose to stick to it. Hmm. And that's what I mean by it's one thing that I chose boxing and it's another that I chose to stick to it. I chose boxing because of the history that I want to write in it. But after going through so much in the sport of boxing and losing so much from the sport of boxing, what made me stick to it is what it will not only mean for me, but what it will mean for my family, what it will mean for everyone watching me. If I leave right now and if I give up, what message am I sending? Mm. Who am I rescuing mm. if I leave right now? Now, if I leave, if I give up, I'm the one that's supposed to be rescued. Yeah. I can't rescue anyone. Yeah. You know, because what, what am I going to go tell someone? Yeah, when you get to that point, that's it. I can't do that. So I am, you can say I am too far in to <laughs> go back now. But I need to keep doing this because I have chosen to be the one to rescue. And that's why I say when I'm representing mm. my country in Saudi Arabia, when I'm representing the whole side of the world in the Arab world, I feel like a superhero. Mm. And I said that in my press conference. I said, Batman protects Gotham City, Superman Metropolis, and I protect Saudi Arabia and the Arab world. So no <laughs> I pressure. That. I love that. But I chose to be the one to rescue based on the stuff that I go through. And when, when you choose something like that, it makes getting up from the struggles easier. So it's one thing to go down. It's the second thing to get up. And it's another thing how you get up and how you start walking after you get up. 
that's the important part. Not that you even got up and not that you've mm. even, you know, fallen down. Mm. And people need to remember that sometimes when you fall in life and you get back up, you're going to need someone to teach you how to walk again. Yeah. Like how you were taught how to walk in the beginning. And that's why I'm going to go to the part where you said health professionals and therapy and sports psychology, whatever mm. it might be. I have a sports psychologist. I have a mental performance coach. And it's okay to have a therapist. It's okay to talk to a mental health professional because we're not taught to eat ourselves. Mm. We're not taught to drink ourselves. We're not taught to do math ourselves. So how are we expected to teach ourselves how to go through struggle and conflict and moments of sadness and that deep emotions? How are we expected to teach that to ourselves? There are professionals who are there to teach us, just like we are taught to walk and eat and drink. Mm. They are there to teach us on how to go through, through these moments. And most importantly, they're there to teach us how to take advantage of these moments. That is why I always say, do not wait for something wrong to happen in your life before you talk to someone about it. Yeah. Talk to someone about how to deal with a problem that might go wrong in your life. So when it comes, you've expected it. And when you expect something that comes, it doesn't shock you. And that's why I always say, leaning on mental health professionals is never something that we should be ashamed of speaking on either mental health professionals or your mate or sports psychologist mental health uh, is massively important in what we do and everything else and i think it's critical component of being a human being because to, to truly improve, as you say, I've got a son now, Billy, he's on the poster behind you. I'm learning so much about family. I've never really put much value on family, I guess, where I've come from. So it's took a lot for me um, to, one, become a dad and to be, well, I think I am, be a successful dad mm -hmm. or father, guider. And everything that I've learned, I hope... I can pass that knowledge on to Billy to be have a bulletproof mindset, even in a, even in adversity, and how to bounce back, get up, and then move forward. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of my best attributes as a dad to Billy. Yeah. Because if I didn't go through my challenges, I wouldn't be half a dad that I am to Billy. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned before about taking a taking time be present to then ultimately improve whatever aspect you're doing. When I first had Billy, um, I struggled hugely to connect with him, build a relationship with him. Um, and something that I read, I think, was to be present in the moment of when you're with him. Um, don't see a distraction. Oh, don't do that. It's about being present with him. And any time I'm around him now, and I think it's rubbed off in other aspects of, with different relationships, is that being present within yourself or within a relationship or being in, in front of a child, um, that's the best thing that, can, that, I can, that you can do regardless of anything, is being present, which then builds connection and builds relationships. Um, you mentioned about the where your, your journey currently and... I think it's a blessing to be in the position that you're in. And I think, yes, there's challenges, more potentially mentally, and elements of loss that you may have had so far. But I think if you keep reminding yourself, it's a blessing to be in this position. Because how many people would fight, physically fight, and fight in general to be in your shoes? And I think if you reflect and you remember and you be present in your mind about that, then the challenging days become easier. I'm not saying it's going to be easier. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's 
it's a 10 out of 10 I can't cope and it's going to down to one it might go down to a seven yeah like oh it's a little bit a little bit yeah. better to remember it's a blessing mm-hmm. um so you touched on them which i think would be good to elaborate on you mentioned that the challenges and losses outside of the fights or outside of the ring what are those to get to be in the position that you're in currently it's the you know the sacrifices and the losses of being with family being Mm -hmm. around family being in my country being around my culture just even being able to call my family being able to talk to my parents because of the difference in time zones Mm. so usually whenever i go through a very tough day or a very bad day in training or i've just managed to get nothing right of what i was asked for from my coach it hits me emotionally just because of the expectations and the pressure i'm on going into a fight and usually when that happens in training camp it's usually around the evening or at night when you're Mm -hmm. done with all the training and this is where everyone is asleep back home because Mm -hmm. of the time zone and most of my time is in the united states and my family's all back home in saudi arabia or in egypt so everyone's asleep by then Mm -hmm. so who are you going to talk to who are you going to lean on it's these moments where you're going to go through it by yourself. And it's these moments where you're going to go through it by yourself well once you understand and accept that you can't go through it by yourself. So just accepting and mm-hmm. knowing that you can be there for you. You can talk to you and you can help you. You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. It's at those times where you're going to grow because there's nothing more uncomfortable than going through something and having no one to lean on. Mm. So this is where the growth comes. And there's something I heard a while ago and it really hit me, it hit me deep. It's that you have in your personality, in your life, you unlock new levels of capabilities under times of stress Hmm. so it's when you're put in times of stress and when you're put under immense pressure and time periods in your life this is where you unlock new capabilities and new levels of thinking reflection expression this is where you unlock all of this so once you look at stressful times and struggles and difficulties from that perspective of something new is about to get unlocked in me you start looking forward to them you start looking forward to the stressful moments because you look forward to after the stressful moment and we tend to fear stressful moments and struggles and difficulties that we've already went through we tend to fear going through them again because we think we are going to be the same person when you go through something again once you've already went through it. But that is not true. I think I I hear Joe Rogan talking about levels of life. Yeah. And I think when you're in the zone or in that space, you don't see it as an opportunity of successful Mm -hmm. growth. You Mm -hmm. see it as whatever the situation is and you're struggling to even get outside of your own box yeah. to achieve and get yeah. up, get on with it. But touching upon that, I put myself now in, in difficult situations to feel that what am I capable of? Mm-hmm. And that's what we do with people who we support and help. And just touching on that, if you're in camp and you're struggling, just give me a bell. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you from a zero to a fucking 10 yeah. and a half an hour. Yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Say, Craig, struggling, yeah. you know, fucking yeah. hell. Give me a buzz, I'll get you out of your box. Um, And I think... But you know, I'm always asked in camp, Mm. I'm always asked the day after a bad day, how are you feeling? And I always say good. Oh, you're feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good because better is always good. Mm. You know, so how are you feeling today? I'm feeling better and better is good. So that is how I always look at it. So the challenges and the struggles, I, I will go through them. And I will accept going through them only because I know they are preparing me 
for the final outcome. And that's how you have to look at everything in your life. Whenever you go through a stressful period or a conflict, you need to know that the emotions you are going to build going through that moment is what is going to lead you to go through the outcome and to get an outcome that you are wanting or you are going to want. Because when you go through something in the present moment now, it's not necessarily to help you tomorrow. Mm. And it's not necessarily to help you next month or next year. Maybe it's going to help you in three, four years. Maybe when you go through such a tough, tough math teacher in high school that's always disliked you and was biased against you, maybe that's pr to prepare you for the real estate job that you are going to mm. have where the boss just thinks you are not that good or they or just dislike you. That prepares you for years ahead. Or the haters. The haters, yeah. That's, the that's naysayers. Awesome. Because I guess in your field, I'm sure there's critics. I'm sure there's people who think they can do a better job than you. Or even if you're in camp or if you're outside the camp or if you're in your fight, including yourself, you, you, you're always going to self-critique and you're always going to try and improve because that's the sport that you're in. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe, this is what I believe, is that, and I've said this since day dot, is that the hater is there to improve you and the hater is there to find your weaknesses. So really, it's a free analytic tool. It's a free way of going, oh, I'm not doing this so good. Okay, I'll work on that. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever comment they say or something that you might hear in the press or something that you might hear um, outside, wherever you are, is that you would, you absorb but you, you be in the press and go, okay, I'll work on that. I'll improve on that. Um, and I think it's it's an opportunity to basically improve overall. That's what I yeah. think. So you've mentioned a couple of your your objectives and goals and wants. Um, from your point of view, what's the the importance of goals? I think the importance of goals is knowing that they will always change. Hmm. And accepting that when you have a goal, it's knowing that you want to reach that goal, but how you will reach that goal, when you will reach that goal, will always change. It, one day you'll think you'll reach that goal next month. And then when next month comes, that goal is going to be a year away. So when you set a goal, you need to understand that the time it's going to take and how you'll get to that goal might change. And when that happens, the goal itself might change. So goals are there to keep you going. For how long to keep you going, that's not up to you. And how to keep you going, that's not up to you. So you need to look at, you have to look at it from this side. It's where the controllables and the uncontrollables mm -hmm. come. Before the night of the fight, I sleep like a baby, yeah. like a baby. Yeah. But before the weigh-in, mm. I don't get a minute of sleep. Not because of the weigh-in, not because of the weight or the food. It's because I think at the time of the weigh-in, everything I can control is then done. After the weigh-in, when it's time to fight, the controllables are much less. What I can control in the fight is much less. It's only minimal to me. Mm. But what happens at the weigh-ins is the face-off. Mm. And when the face-off face comes, I can look my opponent dead in the eye and express my message that I want to express, regardless of how I'm feeling on the inside. But what I choose to express on the outside and what I know I want my opponent to feel or what I want him to feel like I'm feeling, mm. fight night, I can express now at the weigh-ins, at the face-off. So this is why I love the face-off. Because then my work is done. Then everything I can control is done. I've looked you in the eye. I've sent that message of I'm not here to play. I'm here to stay. And tomorrow is going to be either a hard night or a fast night. <laughs> you got to choose. Well, based, you know? on your, based on your last fight, 
he did really well. <laughs> Just give him a little. But, hat. but these are the controllables. Mm. These are the controllables. After that, you did control that fight as well. I mean, at the beginning, I couldn't control he it. He was you know? a, he was crazy. <laughs> yeah, but these are all the controllables. Now I've controlled everything. Now I've delivered all the messages I can. Fight night. What is written is written, and what you can control is minimal to what you can do. You can't control what he does. You can't change what he does. All that you will only change and control based on how you control mm -hmm. yourself. And at the end of the day, that's just the 50-50. Mm -hmm. But before all that, these are the controllables. So when setting goals, when setting targets to reach, you need to also understand and reflect on the goals and the targets and the controllables that come with them. So I've set this goal and I've set that target. But what are the controllables? It's A, B, and C. Okay, I understand. Now, when the uncontrollables hit, you need to understand that you can't control that. I've had a friend call me a few weeks ago, and uh, that person was telling me that they have so many exams coming up, and they just feel so stressed. They feel so, so stressed. They're unable to control the external factors that they mm. go through, if it's mental health or if they're recovering from a specific diagnosis and that this stress that's coming from the exams is really giving them a hard time in their life. And so I said, I replied like this, and I said, Aunt. Mm. And she said, well, I'm stressed. I don't know what to do. I was like, you are stressed mm -hmm. because this is a stressful period. Accept that. Roll with it. And once you tell yourself, it's okay that I'm stressed because it is natural when you are going through a stressful period to feel stressed. So once you tell yourself that this is okay, this is why I'm feeling stressed, then instead of pushing it away, it's going to stay longer. But when you learn to accept it and roll with it, Maybe it will stay the same amount of time, but you will know how to deal with it better. And then you'll feel like it's not even there. So these are the controllables. Knowing what you can control and what you can't. Feeling stressed in a stressful time, that mm -hmm. is something you can't control. No. But how you accept it is something you can control. And I think, speaking about you, and I was hoping we could get onto this topic, is that you're on the undercard for Tommy Fury, and yeah. Jake Paul. <laughs> the dream. And you're fighting in your home country. That's the dream. Which is really exciting. Yeah. I can't even... I'm not good enough at anything to do for my <laughs> home country. <laughs> um, if it's around, if you can get an award... I have actually won an award, haven't I? <laughs> I've won an award, but if I can do it on a national level and, and do health, helping people yeah. with the physical mental health, I would think I would win that award, but I don't think that's <laughs> a natural thing. But to do what you're about to do... <clears throat> on a big bloody stage is one stressful i would imagine um and two stresses come out in many different forms is that be anxiety overthinking lack of performance um being closed not really wanting to engage how are you dealing with the current stresses leading up to the next is it seven days? Yeah. Yeah, seven, yeah days. seven days. How are you managing that at the minute? Are you st are you managing the stress levels? Are you flowing through it? Are you trying to be present, but it's still eating at you? What, how are you dealing with it at the minute? <laughs> so it's knowing that the way I think about it is, why am I stressed? So I'm going through such a stressful period of time because I'm about to perform in front of thousands of people on one of the biggest international stages of boxing. Mm. When I say that, that's a blessing. So it's a good stress to have. It's a good problem to have. Why am I under pressure? Maybe because I'm writing history that night, mm. being the first ever from my country and to do it again in front of them. Okay, that's good pressure to have. So what's making me deal with that stress and pressure is when my head bounces between doubt, fear, and confidence, I accept all, all of them. And I like to go through all of them. 
because I am teaching myself that what I'm going to go through now is preparing me for the bigger and bigger stages that I'll go through later. Mm. And I was talking to my mental performance coach and he told me, we need to accept that each fight, there's something new that is going to be unlocked from something new that you are going to face. Mm. And he said, for this fight, the, the new thing you are going to face is maybe knowing less about your opponent or having a better opponent or if it's your later on at the night, so the arena's full and packed. You're like... Yeah. Or people are expecting a performance based on your last performance. Mm. So I think in general, though, this is how I'm dealing with it and how I'm going through with it. When I'm put in a situation to inspire, and I always say I aspire to inspire, mm. when I'm put in that situation, I just love the stress that goes with it and i said you can't love only the high and avoid the low mm. i love the low and i love the high but i just like to be truthful and honest with myself before i got to the before i got in the car coming here i told jordan i was like I th i'm gonna be silent in the car mm. my head is just at this hour this is where my head is at and i think i might be a little switched off in the car if that's okay but this is not only be being honest with Jordan, it's being honest with myself. Yeah. And knowing that it's okay. That's okay. I'm seven days away from a very big fight. Mm -hmm. I'm going through a lot mentally. And when I say go through a lot, I don't mean just bad. I mean even the good. Mm -hmm. But with excitement comes pressure. And mm -hmm. with, pres with pressure comes excitement. <laughs> and that's okay. But in general, when you are going through something stressful or when you are going through a lot of pressure i think the best way to think about it is the person you are going to become after you go through that stress and after you go through that pressure and that's just how i look about it so when you was talking and i i i think about this all the time i don't really say it out loud much i call i i call things good problems yeah and I'll give you a story is that at one of my lowest points in uh, Tesco supermarket used to sell a chocolate bar for 11 pence. It was about this big and I had about, I don't know, 800 calories in. And that's all I ate every day for a long period of time. So the amount of sugar and negative calories and all the rest of it, I survived on chocolate bars for a good few weeks because I didn't have any other source of income. Obviously, when you've got a billy and you've got an organization and you've got lots of staff to look after, lots of things can happen throughout the day that can be what I call a good problem because it's not really a problem. It's how, yeah. you, it's how you see it. It's how you believe in it. Exactly. Yes, the stakes that you're at going into the next seven days with on the biggest stage, I can't even imagine what that would be like. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be amazing, mm -hmm. I th but I think it'll be amazing. But I'm not in your shoes. I don't have to go in that fucking ring. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'm just watching the TV going, go yeah. on, lad. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there with me popcorn just watching. Uh, it's That's a good problem to have. Yeah, and something else also is in deep times of stress and in deep times of struggle, conflicts, or pressure, mm. something we really need to involve in our lives is a distraction. And if it's a hobby, if it's uh, movies, if it's mm. music, if it's something or someone, you always need to have a distraction. And what happens when you have a big and good distraction is you learn that part of containing your emotions is to sometimes let them out. But when you let them out at your hobby, or when mm. you let them out at your distraction, it's better than letting them out on something or someone that you care about mm. in terms of someone you can hurt or something that you could affect. But when you're, say your hobby is art mm. and you're feeling horrible today and you learn to lean on your distraction and that is your hobby, which is art, you're gonna go and start painting. 
mm. your distraction is music, you're gonna go and listen to the type of music you are feeling to listen to when you're going through these emotions. If it's a movie, if it's an activity, if it's a sport, whatever it is. So when going through stress and pressure, having a distraction is very important because when you go through the emotions that you really want to express in anger or in sadness, then you express it on your hobby instead of expressing it on someone, you know? What's your so distraction? My distraction? It's the movies. <laughs> movies and music. What honestly. movies do you like? What's your favorite all, movie? All kinds all, of movies. All kinds. But, uh, but I, I like drama. Drama? I like drama, yeah. And I like, you know, just true stories and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's what I lean towards. But for me, going into fight week, because I've been through so much, again, mentally, outside of the sport, more than inside of the sport, and I've chosen to learn from it, I now know myself better. Mm. And going into fight week, I always have my childhood friends with me. And they're two, you know? Mm. There are three that keep switching around and they yeah. know me because we've grown up together and they know exactly how I feel. And they express and they expect some expressions of emotions from me mm. during fight week that they learn to accept because they've known me. And you're in that safe space then as well, exactly, aren't you? And exactly. that's where that's where you need yeah. to be at. To so be at your yeah. best is in a safe yeah. space. That's my distraction. They come with me fight week. Good. They stay with me until the end. And even though they're all in university, they have midterms right now, <laughs> but they're taking these few days from them, from their schedules, and they go and they do their tests in the hotel room and everything, you know? But I like to live my life when it's a big like stage that I'm about to perform in. I like to live like it's just a normal day. Mm. So the day of the weigh-ins is just a normal day. We're still playing PlayStation in the morning. We're still doing this and doing that. The day of the fight, we're doing the same thing. So the more normal it is for me in terms of the people I have around me, the more normal I feel what I'm about to do is normal. Mm. In the locker room, I don't like any unfamiliar faces. Mm. In the locker room before the fight, I like everyone to be a familiar face because the more familiar my locker room is, the more familiar I am with what I'm about to do. And that's not then a negative distraction. Exactly. Because exactly. you can control that environment to be in the space yeah. that you want it to be in. But then if some randomer comes in and, and, and wants your attention, yeah, yeah. that's a negative distraction yeah. because it's like, <laughs> I'm in my zone here, yeah. John, do you know what I mean? Yeah, do you like want? I hate the guy that comes in for the drug test before the <laughs> fight. Like, who are you? Just who are you? Leave. <laughs> And they always speak so slowly. <laughs> and I said, they speak so slowly. And you're like minutes away from the fight. Just, just do it and get <laughs> exactly, out, mate. Do you know exactly. what I mean? <laughs> um, so distractions are friendship groups, which mm. is important. Yeah. Positive friendship groups. Has to be the right friend. Definitely. The right friends are the ones that are going to accept you for the bad more than the ones who are going to accept you for the good. You have to be right, careful yeah. around that as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people out there who are after, I don't know, even monetary value. Exactly. Take a, take a picture with you exactly. and get that. Exactly. And with horses, you know what I mean? You have to be very cautious who you that's wrap around yourself say, with. That's why I say my childhood friends who have come up with me and have mm. seen me build this from the ground up. So, like I said, the real friends are the ones who are going to accept you for the bad more than they are accepting you for the good. And they're the ones that are supporting you at your small accomplishments more than they are supporting you after your big accomplishments. Because the ones who are supporting you with the small accomplishments are the same ones that are going to be in your locker room after mm. a loss. Mm. And they're not going to be ones who disappear after a loss you know they're the ones that are going to be in the locker room after a loss and after a win the ones that support that small achievements those small steps you know i was gonna say then is that i always like to read or sometimes i post every now and again a negative just to see who comments on that negative yeah to see who Obviously, everyone's going to fucking give you a round of applause and say congratulations yeah. Yeah. on your post if you win mm -hmm. or if you lose or if it's a draw on any sort. I don't just mean that towards boxing. I mean mm -hmm. a win 
in business. Yeah, yeah. A win with the child. I, be I believe Billy is a blessing. Yeah. He is. He's a miracle baby. Um, but every now and again, I post something that's a negative just to see who's going to come to your aid or mm -hmm. not necessarily comment, but message. Mm -hmm. Say, you were right, Craig. Mm -hmm. You were right. Yeah, I'm sad. Just want to see who's, who's the realists out there, ultimately. Yeah. I'm sure you're probably doing this, and I don't know how much the sport's developed in your country at the minute. Mm -hmm. I've never been to your country, so mm -hmm. don't know. I've, I've researched enough yeah, about yeah. yeah and how you've used to train. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know where it's at currently. Um, but I think it'll be really humbling and keeping you focused and even know you don't need it and disciplined and motivated and all those words to see, go back and see what's happening. Yeah, I always do. I'm sure you do. I, I, I go back, whenever I'm back home, I'm training there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm always you training there. It. Yeah, I'm always training with my same coaches, same everything, because it's just this is where I came from. Hmm. And this is, if I've come this far starting there then there's no no reason why mm. i can't maintain where i am by being there you so, know so some people do get distr negatively distracted yeah don't they? yeah 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 and i guess with buddy now he's in, he's improving you at a rate and you do need that yeah. obviously and i think that comes with winning and being on a bigger stage yeah. some people do get distracted and forget yeah where they come from yeah um even now, I, I live in a, I, I call it a mansion. It's actually not a mansion. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a mansion. But from where I've come from, yeah, it's a fucking mansion. Yeah, yeah, that's, I understand to when me, you see it, that. It's yeah. big. Um, and then when I go back to Liverpool, I always, uh, even if I'm nowhere near it, mm -hmm. I always drive down the road where I used to live mm -hmm. and just feel it. Yeah, yeah. Not from a negative sense, but from a humbling sense. Yeah. And knowing Definitely. that this is where I've come from. Yeah. And we need to remember my ambition mm -hmm. and I'm getting closer to it every day mm -hmm. is to is to build one of these centers in Liverpool. Yeah. And we're getting there and we're pretty close because yes we do physical training but we all ha also have a huge amount of support around mental health with yeah, professionals. Yeah, yeah. And a few other and a few other services. Um and I understand the need in my own city is massive. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. not everyone trusts the health professionals not everyone trusts yeah. going to the doctors exactly, and all the rest of yeah. it so to have an alternative support mechanism and give someone a, an opportunity to look after mm -hmm. themselves rather than going down a clinical route it's massively needed yeah, so definitely. that's why I'm going to them spaces to like just know how important it is to get back there and I guess when you're doing your training within those spaces you remember this is why I'm doing it. Exactly. And this is why I want to get back. Yeah. So you was going to raise a point before. Yeah. Um, what was that? Going back to talking about, you know, that real friends and real people. It's just to know that at the end of the day, whoever goes is meant to go and mm -hmm. whoever stays is meant to stay. And it's just thinking about it from where some people come into your life for a season mm. and some people come into your life for a reason and from each person that you are going to get to know from each person you are going to go through something with you are going to learn something from and just to know that will make you accept any outcome of any situation or scenario you go through with anyone or you go in with anyone so uh, that's just how I, I like to think of it because I've been through many situations in my life. I've had many people come and I've had many people go. And it's the people that go that you learn most from. And so when you realize that you learn most mm. from the people that go, you don't start resenting it and you don't even start resenting them. Mm. And you end up making it easier for yourself to forgive because when you forgive something for someone it's to make the fire in you calm down mm. you know when you forgive something for when you forgive someone for something they did usually when you forgive them it's not even for them mm. it's for you it's for you to calm down it's for you to move on it's for you to be 
happier, healthier, and to live a calmer and a stress-free life. But when you hold a grudge, hmm. who is it going to affect at the end? The person you are not forgiving, the person you are resenting, and the person you are holding a grudge against right now is sleeping fine at night. It's you that you're losing sleep. It's you that is having trust issues. It's you that is keeping yourself closed off from people because of what someone else did to you. Not everyone is the same. And I will always say this and I'll keep saying it is you will never be the same person you were before you walked into the storm after you've come out of it. Mm -hmm. And part of that is knowing that once you walk through that same storm again, because that same storm will come, you will go into more than one relationship and you will have more than one friendship that will result in the same outcome. But how you dealt with yourself after the first outcome will never be the same as how you are going to deal with yourself after the second outcome. You are a different person. You have unlocked different capabilities in you after you have went through that time of stress because like I said, times of stress mm. unlocks new levels and capabilities in you. So when you unlock new levels and capabilities, once you go through something that you have already went through once, you already know how to deal with it. You know more about it. And most importantly, you know more about you. You know how you are going to feel after you go through a breakup. You know how you are going to feel after you go through a lost friendship. So when you expect something, it doesn't shock you when it comes and you will deal with it. That's what I was going to say, is that the ultimate thing that I think about in that scenario, again, is a blessing, is that it identifies areas of opportunity, either that from a lost relationship or someone doing you negatively mm. or something that goes on social media. It identifies who they are and it'll bring out the best in you normally. Yeah. Because there's a reason that they would only eat for a season rather than exactly. longevity because yeah. if if they're here for longevity who knows what that outcome could be in 12 months because they only should have been here for six months mm -hmm. and it, it always identifies areas of opportunity for you to either improve or get better at that's the idea behind yeah. it ultimately well just talking about you know friends relationship friendships and people leaving and people going it's knowing that these are again all external factors. Mm. So when you're setting goals and when you're setting targets and ambitions, either these are all internal factors. And once sometimes you let someone in so much into your life, they become an internal. Mm. But you need to understand that once they leave, once they go, they have instantly become an external. Mm -hmm. Even if the feelings you are going to feel about them are internal, they cannot affect the rest of the internal factors, they are now external. Your sadness about them cannot affect what you are doing to change your internal factors and your goals and your targets. So another part of when you're setting goals and targets is not only knowing the controllables and uncontrollables, but it's also knowing that external factors cannot affect them when they become internal factors, you know? so. It's just knowing that your goals are always going to be internal. And whatever happens on the external, you have to deal with it on the external. This is its own life, and your internal is its own life. It's like you are two different people. The you who is chasing greatness and chasing his success is different from the you who is in a friendship or in a relationship that's gone wrong or is going extra good. You know, it's that uh, thing where... Um, I was listening to Tom Hanks speak mm. and he said he wished he knew earlier in his life that this too shall pass. Mm. And it's always important to know in your life that this too shall pass. Is something going good for you? Is something going great for you? This too shall pass. It's not only the bad. Mm. So if something, ba if something for you is going bad or you're going through a difficult time, this too shall pass. Is it going good? Is it going great? This too will pass. So just know that mm -hmm. you only own moments in time. 
and moments in time are there to be passed. Mm -hmm. And once they are passed, don't hang on to the emotions that were in that moment of time. Because if you end up hanging on to these emotions that were there in these moments of time, after they are gone, you're going to find yourself living in the past. And when you live in the past, you can never make it to the future. And that ultimately results in depression or anxiety. Exactly. Vice exactly. Versa. Because you end up chasing emotions that are no longer there. And you end up chasing mm -hmm. that high and that adrenaline or whatever it is. Or push away or exactly. try and grab. Exactly. You are trying to still feel that emotion after that moment in time that has given you that emotion is now oh. gone. Mm -hmm. So instead of you chasing that emotion and working towards it again, you are trying to find it even though you haven't worked for it. It's, it's, it's like when, for me, for example, after my pro debut, that was a high. Mm. After that knockout, that was a high. You're getting the messages, you're getting the hype, you're getting the media, but because I understood that I'm only getting this and I'm only feeling this type mm. of way because this is the moment of time that's causing these emotions and reactions, after it was gone, I've learned to accept it and you end up chasing that same feeling again. And th that, to me, that is something amazing in sports. I love boxing. For example, football, they, they play three times a week. So they're always in sight. And mm -hmm. when you're in sight, you're in mind. And when you're out of sight, you're out of mind. Mm -hmm. In boxing, I love that idea of out of sight, out of mind, because we are more out of sight Mm -hmm. than in other sports but when we are in sight it's big massive yeah but when you are out of sight you're also out of mind and that keeps you grounded that keeps you working that keeps you pushing and that keeps you humble mm -hmm. because the same people and the amount of people that were talking about you when you were in sight and in mind doing incredible stuff are not going to be talking about you the week after the fight Mm -hmm. And when you're preparing for two months after for your next fight, no one's talking to you or about you then. No one's going like, wow, look at what he's accomplishing in sparring. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares. Yeah. But that's good for me as a boxer because that keeps me grounded, that keeps me humble, and that keeps me just chasing something more and more and more. And it keeps me wanting to improve because the next time I'm in sight, I have to make sure I stay in mind for longer because mm -hmm. of my performance, you know? And I think that in summary overall is that if you look at you as a person, you've got your own personal objectives and ambitions. Mm -hmm. But I think the world, either from a boxing standpoint or either that be from a cultural standpoint or a region, yeah, you are destined... I think boxing is your enabler to do something bigger. Yeah. That's what I believe. From listening and, and seeing who you are and listening to how you speak about yourself. Box, boxing is your transportation to get to unity, love, camaraderie, safety, design and a blueprint. Mm -hmm. Obviously, from a selfish point of view, I don't really use that way from very often, but everyone in some, some level has got their own personal ambitions, which be, could be yeah. classified as selfish, yeah. is that you become the best in the world. And who doesn't want to be the best no, in the world or something? Do you know what I mean? World, yeah. We all want to be able to, to, to work hard, to put the effort in, have the lows, have the highs, mm -hmm. but you have the lows to get the highs, and it's important exactly. to acknowledge that. Um, and it's important to know that sometimes it's better to be the best person in the world than to be the best fighter in the world, the mm. best businessman in the world. So, and that's what I always say. I, and I make sure it's in my contracts sometimes for fights or long-term contracts. It's that there are fighters who fight many, many times a year, maybe eight, nine times a year, especially at the level I'm at when you're just starting. But I was maybe given different opportunities where I don't have to fight that many times a year because of the exposure I get mm. based on the cards and, and shows I'm put on, thank God, before everything. Um, but what I want to go into is, to me, 
who I am as a person and my identity is what matters most at the end of the day. I have a duty to my parents. Mm -hmm. I have a duty to give back to them and to take care of them. And I have a responsibility to just be there for them. So my biggest regret ever in sports or in my career is to finish accomplishing what I want to accomplish, what I'm on the road to accomplish. If it's being undisputed, if it's being multi-weight world champion, and to look back and say, I didn't spend enough time with my parents. And mm. that's not even friends. Or I'm not talking about friends. All that to me, I'm good mm. with losing that, sacrificing that. But I have personal and also religious duties to my parents and responsibilities mm. to my parents. So to accomplish everything I accomplish, if someone came to me right now today and told me, to accomplish what you want to accomplish, you're going to have to fight X amount of times a year. And to fight X amount of times a year, you are not going to see your parents for X amount of years. I would say, thank you, boxing. I'm going to go and be with my parents. Mm. That's just how I look at it. Because it's one thing to know that someone will understand what you have to be away because. And it's another thing to know that they will also feel a certain type of way once you are with them. And that's, for example, when I say that, I talk about my mother. And my mother is such a big part of my life. You know, she's my best friend. So my mom, if I told her I'm not going to come back home for 10 years because I will, I will become a world champion if I do that, mm -hmm. she will understand. And she will tell me, do it. But me, personally... In my identity and in my personality, knowing how happy she gets when I spend time with her, mm. I can never do that. And religiously, the way I look at it is if I give back to my parents, if my parents are happy, life is going to keep me happy. Mm. If my parents are satisfied, life is going to keep me satisfied. If I sacrifice time from accomplishing what I want to accomplish in boxing and achieve in boxing to give more time for my parents to achieve their happiness, then I'll be rewarded with a bigger achievement in boxing. Mm. That's just how I think about it. And I th the only, you speaking then about family is that I, I've never really put much emphasis on family, really. So talking about mums and dads, yes, I've got a relationship with mum and mm -hmm. dad and they're still with us. Mm -hmm. Um is it the best relationship? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but the only time I truly understand love and connection and protection really is when Billy came along. Mm -hmm. And then you saying to your mum, I won't see you in 10 years. I'm going to be a champ and I can give you the life that you deserve for looking after me. <clears throat> Either that be buying, staying with her for the next 50 mm -hmm. years thereafter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, if if you came, to, if we had this conversation two years ago, I wouldn't understand that. But yeah. now that I've got Billy, I can I can understand the reasons your mum would say that, but I can also understand the reasons yeah. you would say it also. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's what it kind of boils down to with everything within life is loyalty. And I said the way before, this connection. You're doing it for a bigger purpose, exactly, for yourself and also for your family. And without that. We're non-existent, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. ultimately. Um, what are you fearful of? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, it's, um, I don't want to sound arrogant or anything, but I'm really fearful of nothing. I'm fearful of absolutely nothing. Just because of I'm accepting of anything that is going to come. Mm. So I can have doubts, I can have worries, but fear is going to stop me from overcoming my doubts and my worries. So I already know that much about myself and I've already went through a lot in the sport of boxing and in life to know that if one thing is going to stop you from overcoming struggles and hurdles in your life, it's fear. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm fearful of nothing. I accept the emotions that are going to come in doubt and in worries and all that. I accept these emotions. And when I accept them, I know how to deal with them. And part of accepting them is not to be afraid of them. So I'm not fearful of it. I'm not afraid of losing people. I'm not afraid of making people enter my life because whatever is going to come from them, I'm going to know how to deal with because I'm not fearful of it. Mm. But doubts and worries and all that, this will all be there. Yeah, doubt and worries will be there. But part of dealing with them is to not be afraid of them and not to push them away. So I'm not fearful of anything because I'm ready for anything that is going to come. And I am ready for anything to change at any point of time. What is written for me is already written. Mm. How I'm going to react to it is something I can control. How it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, it's nothing I can control. So again, like I said, it's the controllables mm. and the uncontrollables. So you mentioned what is written. Mm -hmm. I believe, I don't know if this is a belief system or the thought process, but I do manifestation an affirmation and visualization. I would say every day, but that's a lie. Um, but I try to do it as much as possible, even if it's for five minutes, a five minute practice. Do you do any of the above? Do you focus on affirmation as in positive talk to yourself? Do you push into the world of manifestation? Because then that kind of counteracts what's already written. Yeah. So it's yeah. hard one to manage. Yeah. No, this is, I do all of the above. Mm. But these are controllables. Mm. But I always say people misunderstand and people misinterpret the law of attraction mm. and manifestation. When you are attracting something from the universe, when you are manifesting something from the universe you set a target you set a end result and when you think so much about that target and when you think so much about that end result you start not acquiring or attracting the end result or the target you start acquiring the skills that are capable to reach that end result and target hmm. now because you think of that target and end result so much you start slowly becoming the person who will deserve to reach that end result and target. You will slowly start becoming the person who will acquire the skills to deserve to be at that top spot in that result or in that target. I think it's like, for example, you becoming the champ and you set a goal, let's say, 2024. I'll be a champ in 2024. You won't become a champ by not doing anything. Yeah. You become a champ by going for the runs when Buddy says go for a run. Yeah. You yeah. become a champ by sparring a certain amount of time. You become a champ by getting up early and being committed to getting up early mm -hmm. and having decent um, recovery, as mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. enough sleep. Mm -hmm. If you're up till 11 o'clock and you're getting up at 11 o'clock, you're missing out windows of opportunity. So then you would go to bed earlier, you get up earlier, and you'd be on that regimented path of becoming a champ. Yeah. And that's part of um, manifesting the success and becoming yeah. that champ overall. That yeah. is the law of attraction, and that's manifestation. Just the law of attraction is attracting the capabilities required for your end result, not the end result itself. Mm. You reaching the end result will depend on you, will depend on what you can control. All the uncontrollables you can't control. But what you can control is the skills that you can acquire to reach that end result. The end result, that is already written, whether you reach it or not. But know that you will only reach a specific end result and you will only reach a specific target once you deserve to reach it. Sometimes you're not only convincing other people that you deserve to be in that spot. Sometimes you're also going to have to convince the universe 
you're mm-hmm. going to have to convince that energy in the environment that you deserve to be in that job or in that position and you deserve to be there by the work you've put in by the skills you've acquired that is the law of attraction do you ever feel like you'd have to convince yourself the positions that you're in because i know i I do i mean at times do if i have to convince myself do i deserve to be in the position i put in Mm -hmm. yeah of course of course Mm -hmm. but I have to convince myself by the work I put in. Yeah. And again, I was talking to my mental performance coach about this when I first started camp. I started telling him because the early sparring sessions were horrible. They were just horrible. I didn't have anything. I don't have my defense. I don't have my speed, my power. Mm -hmm. And I'm just getting battered, you know. But then he told me, I told him, so how am I supposed to feel like I deserve to have this fight or I deserve to be on this stage if I can't beat the people that are at these levels? How should I expect for myself to beat the people that are at top level to become a world champion? Hmm. He's like, you are basing, he said, you are judging your performance on the fight based on your performance in a time you are not ready at all. He said, look back again after two months, once you're completely done with camp, and then say, do I deserve to be at this stage I'm at? So it's, it's one thing to convince yourself that you deserve to be in the position you are, and it's another thing to choose when to start questioning and convincing yourself that you deserve to be in the position you are, because now, if you tell me, do I deserve to be in that yeah. fight I'm about to go in? I'll tell you, I deserve to win that fight. I deserve to knock him out. So you because did. Exactly, because I'm ready, because I've put in the work, I've went through it, and my defense is better. sound right now. <laughs> you know, I'm not getting touched, I'm not getting hit. So it's like, this is, this, is, this is something that's exciting, you know? So it's okay to sometimes misjudge and, and just think of yourself that you don't deserve to be there. It's just the wrong timing. And I think deserving to be somewhere or deserving to take something from it is part of the conversation. But then I think we were talking off camera about your overall mental well-being leading into the next seven mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. And you've just answered your own question. Like, yeah. you deserve to be in this position. Yeah. Maybe at the start of the eight weeks, my, my, uh, yeah, horrendous. I shouldn't be in this position. Yeah. <laughs> But now you're defending, you're moving a bit more, mm-hmm. you, 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 you're on it. Yeah. You are becoming that rounded fighter for this fight. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter around the other outside noise outside of the ring or the opportunities that may come up. For you, it's this fight. Exactly. You deserve to be in this fight. Exactly. And like you just said, you'll smash them. Yeah. So it doesn't really yeah, matter really. anything else that comes into <laughs> it. You just have to just keep, as we said before, reflecting on mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. and being present in the moment yeah. of I am who I am. Yep. I deserve to be in this position. And you will win the fight, ultimately. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it? God willing. We spoke about a little bit already. Um, and I think it's obvious to everyone. How important is it for you to have passion in anything that you do? I think it's the most important thing to have passion in what you do. Deep, deep down, you need to have passion in what you do and what you are running to achieve. Now, don't expect that passion to be there every day because when you start looking for the passion, it's not going to be there. Mm -mm. The passion is only going to be there in the days where you're not looking for it. But once you start looking for the passion, it's going to disappear. So don't expect it to be there every day but expect it to be there at the right time. Mm. Because in your journey to success, it's going to take so much more out of you than just doing it for yourself to actually make it and to actually stick to it. You're going to have to be doing it for so many other reasons. And so many other reasons are going to be linked to passion. This is where passion comes in. Mm. When you're passionate about something, it's for multiple reasons. That is real passion. And so when one reason goes down one day, there's another reason that keeps it there. And there's another reason that might keep it there when another one goes down that day. So 
don't look for the passion, don't expect it to be there every day, but it's important to be passionate about what you want to reach because at the right time, at the right difficult time, when it's almost time to quit, because you're going to feel like you're going to mm. want to quit, you're going to want to quit many, many days, but then because you are so passionate about that time, you are not going to quit. And when I say you are not going to quit, I don't mean that you are not going to temporarily quit. Mm. It's okay to temporarily quit. It's okay to say I'm going to walk away and walk away for a day, a week, a month, or three, or a year, but the passion will make you come back. And you only truly quit once you have stopped coming back, once you stop getting up after you've fallen. When you quit, you fall. If you don't get back up, you didn't come back. Mm. You, you have, you've actually quit. But the passion will keep you coming back, and that's why it's important. So I agree with what you're saying there around passion, as in there's multiple factors of passion. Mm -hmm. So my team is a passion. Billy's exactly. a passion. Exactly. Um, the people who we've not yet met to serve is a passion. Yeah. Um, in your equation of passion, I can probably guarantee family is part of that. Mm -hmm. um, your country, mm -hmm. your yeah. religion. Yeah. Are you part of the equation of it? I'm going to be honest with you, and so many people are going to disagree with me on this. I am the least part of the equation. Mm. to me but not because I care I'm the least to care about it it's because when I say I am the least part of the equation it's because I alone have played the least amount of like role mm. to come where I have come now my family for me like when you ask me who am I what am I made of I'm made of my family made of my country and I'm made of my religion this is who I am as a person. So when I say I am the least importance for that equation, it's because these, uh, these factors are who I am. Mm. My parents, such a big part of my life. My religion, a big part of my life. My country, a big, big part of my life. This is who I am. But me alone, me just, I didn't do this alone. This is selfish for me to say. Mm. And I am not going to do this alone. That's why I hate the word I. Mm. I don't use it. I will say we a lot, you know, because I'll say my country, I'll say my family. I, I'll keep saying that. So this is something I'm passionate about, yeah. But on the road I'm on for boxing, for wanting to achieve what I want to achieve, doing it and seeing my parents happy will make me happier than doing it for me seeing my country happy and inspiring millions of people, that makes me so happy. I think, you know? I think is the population, uh, this might change, uh, I, I read it maybe a week ago, is it 40 to 50 million, the population? That's in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, of your... And then in Egypt, it's 100 million. I'm going to say. And then it's Turkey, it's whatever million, Morocco, it's whatever million, when I'm telling you a whole side of the world. And then from the, the religion aspect. Yeah, exactly. And then the religious aspect, how many people? Billions. Billions. <laughs> so, billions. So it's, it's an immense mm. amount of weight that I'm carrying on my shoulders going into every single fight. But it's that weight that keeps me grounded, literally. Mm. And it's that weight that gives me so much power in knocking an opponent out. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> and I, my, my back is against the wall. Okay. And I like the pressure because the pressure makes it better, you know? So listening so far, you've, you've got a clear, hopefully a clear blueprint about creating a legacy. And to me, that's inspirational because that's what I want to do for people to improve physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, do you have anyone or did you did you have anyone as a role model when you first started out or still have today who you look up to? Yeah, honestly, I did. And uh, before I get into it, you know, I had to come to realize that sometimes we struggle so much in finding role models or in finding idols because we look so far away. Mm. When I say so far away, we look 
to the people who we have absolutely no connection to or have accomplished what we want to accomplish, but we are not connected to. You know, that's why it's maybe harder to idolize or to make them role models because we don't know them, they don't know us. What you don't know is sometimes your role models and your idols are much closer than you think. They're actually just right over your shoulder, you know? Mm -hmm. And to me, that was my mom, my dad, my older brother, my boxing coach, my strength and conditioning coach. It's you sitting in front of me. It's all that. So I pick up attributes that I idolize. Mm. And every person I meet that's in my environment that's already reached what I want to reach. If it's you building this empire in fitness and in mental health, if it's my coach accomplishing exactly what I want to accomplish in exactly the weight classes I want to accomplish, mm -hmm. he's my idol and he's right there in my environment. If it's my dad and the way I carry myself and the tone I speak at, mm -hmm. how high my voice is ever going to get in an argument, that will come from my dad. Never ever heard my dad shout, never heard him scream at times of extreme stress, pressure, anger. I never shout. I never raise my voice. And that I take from him because my message will be delivered anyways. If I shout, if I scream, it will be delivered anyways. So being calm and setting a calm tone of voice expresses confidence. And I take that from him. And then from my mother, I idolize and I role model that attribute of no matter how bad things are going, it's the smile that you give yourself or it's the laugh that you give yourself that will eventually change how you feel. So how you express on the outside will ultimately change and express on the inside. So your idols and your role models are usually much closer than you think. So that's who I look up to and that's who I idolize. And these are the people that have set the blueprint for me and set my personality to, God willing, create that legacy that I want to do. And I think that's very touching because, as you say, <clears throat> you always look to the unreachables. Exactly. Someone who is so far away from you, you don't know who they are. Ultimately, mm -hmm. you know as much as they portray. So having that way of looking at it as role models and and having family and now I'm within that mix it's I'm same to you you're a role model and as an inspiration to, to the levels you're going to get to and the, the kids you're going to inspire and help without you even knowing you're helping that that's that's mm -hmm. truly a role model um and I think that's a fantastic way to end and I really appreciate you taking your time out even in camp especially in the last seven days um and we wish you all the best in this fight and for future fights. Uh, thank you for giving me the platform and coming from my, where I came from and the dreams that I didn't even dare dream of as a kid doing this stuff now, <laughs> I never get used to it. No matter how many podcasts or interviews or sit downs I do, it's always new to me and it's always just uh, a dreaming of feeling when I finish one. So thank you for giving me the platform and thank you for sending that message out there. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.